Welcome to Funding and Disrupting, the most in-depth business podcast for companies looking to raise money and the investors who fund them. Every episode, we interview a funded founder plus the investor who funded them to get the real story of how it all came together. If you're searching for funding for a disruptive technology or business, or you're searching for the best companies to invest in, then you've come to the right place. This episode of Funding and Disrupting is brought to you by Aura Collective, a leading tech PR and marketing firm. Let's get funding and disrupting. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Keith Herman, and welcome to today's special dual interview of Funding and Disrupting. We are pleased to have Brad Yasser, the founder and CEO of Equify, which is a decentralized protocol for pooled lending and borrowing that decentralizes finance for everyone. In addition, we also have our venture capital guest, Kim Oishi, the CEO and of Grand Rock Capital, that invests in growth companies and provides advice regarding corporate finance, investor relations, business development, and mergers and acquisitions. Grand Rock Capital recently invested in Equify. So let's get to the interview and welcome Brad and Kim. How are you, gentlemen? I'm well. Thank you for having us, Keith. Terrific. Thanks. How about how about you, Kim? Uh, me too. I'm doing great, Keith. Thanks for having us on. We're uh, always happy to talk about Equify and uh, spread the word. Terrific. Well, uh, what I'd like to start out with is is with Brad and uh, find out a little bit about his background because I see that he speaks five languages. So why don't you tell us about your background, where you grew up, and uh, your interest in other cultures? Yeah, that that's actually a long story, but I'll try to uh, <laughs> compress and condense it to a bite size. Um, I was born in Turkey, and um, because of my dad's business, traveled extensively in Europe and North America and globally. Actually, um, I've been an entrepreneur all my life, and and I think as uh, as it is a global endeavor learning other languages came uh, quite naturally whenever I uh, would want to go outside of the Turkish sphere. Uh, it, it required another language, of course. So it was English first and then French. And then I kept studying because I thought if I can communicate with someone in their own language, um, it's going to be a more genuine and natural communication. Terrific. So how about you, Kim? Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Happy to do that, uh, Keith. We, uh, I, I've been involved in uh, growth companies since the, uh, uh, I'm going to date myself a little bit here, but since the uh, mid-90s and uh, started off working at a brokerage firm for a few years in, in Vancouver, working in venture capital, tech and mining. But very shortly afterwards, uh, started my own company with one of my larger customer clients, you could say, and investors. And so since then, uh, we've been investing in growth companies and then providing uh, value-add services. And usually that's uh, around the capital markets um, uh, part of the business. We help private companies go public. We certainly uh, invest in, in a number of rounds. We usually like to get in early, so we take a, quite a bit of risk with the founders and uh, and then invest in subsequent rounds and, and then also uh, help them raise capital from other investors. And sometimes we're also able to help them on business development too. So we really, uh, uh, really uh, sell ourselves, you might say, or, or market ourselves as value add investors. And we stick with companies anywhere from you know two to ten years uh, with our investments. So Kim, you're you're based in Canada. Yes, uh, Vancouver and Toronto is where we mostly operate out of. Um, and uh, and then we spend quite a bit of time being Canadians. We spend quite a bit of time in you know a relatively small capital market. Uh, we we spend quite a bit of time in New York, uh, London, and and uh, and even over in Asia as well. Um, so we have to be, you know, quite often we can get the first, you know, ten or twenty million dollars in Canada, but after that we um, we start sourcing capital globally as we start getting into larger financings. So Brad, you are in Los Angeles, correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Just so we have the geography straight. Uh, because it's very often that uh, the parties are separate, uh, sometimes, you know, on the other side of the world. So it's just interesting to uh, to just, you know, share where you are. Um, so, Brad, tell us about Equify. Explain to us how it's a game changer. 
Well, Equify is a DeFi platform that brings traditional banking and, and um, this new decentralized financial model together. Um, it is a game changer uh, uh, because it, it basically brings future together with the past. A lot of the projects um, that are launching in the um, decentralized cryptocurrency space these days, they look straight to the future. And, and they don't really concern themselves too, too, too much with the, the incumbents or the existing systems. They're like, we're going to change things. We're going to uh, break things, but it's going to be better. The traditional folk in finance and banking are resistant to any, any kind of change because, um, you know, it's the status quo. They have a good, good thing going. They have systems in place and they don't necessarily particularly uh, want to innovate too quickly because whenever you innovate, there's risk. What we envisioned and are doing with Equify is bringing the two worlds together. So instead of disrupting one or being stuck in the other, we want to bridge the two and, and usher the future in together with the incumbents as well as the game changers. Great. <clears throat> so now we have a clear picture of, of, of Equify. We can see why Grand Rot found it uh, intriguing. So Kim, if you wouldn't mind, tell us how you met Brad and describe your first meeting and impression of Brad and Equify. Well, you know, uh, our, our history with Equify goes back to uh, 2018 when we actually hadn't met Brad yet, but we invested in a company called Equibank. So we were one of the first outside investors into Equibank, which is a partner and shareholder of Equify. And Equibank is a fully licensed digital bank. We were interested in Equibank because we were just starting to, uh, some of my friends, we're, we're actually, Brad makes a very good point. We're, I'm kind of a traditional finance uh, guy, you know, M&A, uh, equities, uh, debt structures, working in, in uh, public companies listed in Canada and the U.S. But we really felt we needed to get exposure to the uh, digital asset world. So our first investment in that was putting a, a, a pretty good chunk of capital into Eki Bank, which is a digital offshore bank, uh, which which was going to handle crypto, uh, digital assets, and fiat, and so we wanted to get involved in a in a in a not by investing strictly by directly into a token to start with or into a, a cryptocurrency, but investing in, into a company that was going to provide services to that sector, uh, and then in, and and then what happened was is that we became investors in Eki Five because Eki Bank partnered up with Eki Five. And so in 2021, uh, uh, we actually uh, invested another another big chunk of money into Eki Bank. And then and then after that, when Brad and uh, uh, Jason Blick, the CEO of, of Eki Phi, got together, we then became an investor in Eki Phi. So we we started investing first in the parent company, you could call it, or the shareholder company, and then uh, really uh, loved, better, you know, we wanted to get, get into the uh, digital assets directly. And we felt Brad would be a great way of doing that because he understood traditional finance and had a, a track record in traditional finance and then moved into the digital asset world. And so uh, uh, we, we also did some due diligence. As one of our big things is, is the people. And we had some friends who had actually worked with Brad before and, and gave us uh, really good reviews of his, um, his past uh, it, it, you know, wins and, and, and some of the challenges. And, and we like to invest with founders who've had both wins and losses along the way because they... They tend to then uh, know what to do in, in tough circumstances as well as in good circumstances. And and Brad, what what was your perception of, of your first encounter with Grand Rock? Well, before we go into that, great question, Keith. I do want to give some color around the uh, relationship. So Equify is the brainchild of uh, two co-founders, uh, me and uh, my co-founder, Jason Blick, who is also the CEO of Equibank. So it was a joint venture between our technology uh, resources and the banking uh, acumen that the Equibank um, team brought in. And, and it, was, um, it was an incredible synergy there, uh, hence the introduction. My first impression of, of Kim was extremely positive. Um, he is very open to helping out in any way he can. A, a lot of the times, um, you know, people who spend 20, 30, 40 years in the venture capital space or just capital, early stage capital space are 
they they're tired. They 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 don't have the same first day enthusiasm and and energy to put into because you know when you get your first win, of course that's uh, that defines you as an investor. But then if you continue getting good uh, good streaks, um, I guess it it comes to a point where you do not have the bandwidth or the energy to have that hands-on approach with Kim it was exact opposite he brought all the experience decades of experience but also the energy that you see from uh, first-time investors and first-time VCs and and, and, you know people who really want to roll up their sleeves and help out and for me it was um very exciting when you have investors and partners like that in the project that genuinely care about your success not about how many x return they're going to get or when they're going to get their money back obviously all those things are important but when people genuinely care about what you're doing and are aligned with your mission vision and goals which i felt we were with grand rock it um it creates a different type of partnership so let's hear, Cam, tell us more specifically about Grand Rock, uh, more specifically the investments um, that you're making and what it is that you look for. Well, we're, we're a bit eclectic. You know, we're, we're, um, we're, well, we don't invest in everything, but we're a bit eclectic. Some of my friends are very focused on one sector, and that has a lot of value because you build up a lot of knowledge in that one sector. We're really uh, looking for two things, you know, big opportunities. And uh, of course, Equify is at the ground stages of uh, the revolution in, in uh, digital assets. And then as importantly, or maybe even more importantly, we look for good people, people that we can trust, people that we can work with. And quite frankly, as I get older, you know, people we can actually enjoy spending some time with, because uh, as Brad said, it's it's uh, the, the returns are very important, but it's also as you get older, you want to work with people that uh, you can actually enjoy working with. And so uh, that's what we're looking for is big growth opportunities in, in the technology space, but also in, in other sectors, getting in reasonably early and, and then working with people that have a track record and that we really believe we can trust and rely on. Uh, uh, even if things go sideways a bit, uh, th- that's when, if things are going perfectly, every, no, no, you never find out about people, but sometimes inevitably in a growth company, there's gonna be ups and downs so we really look, uh, you know, people is the, bi- the big thing first. And that's where we really, uh, Brad was giving me a compliment. I'll put it back to him is that he's been extremely patient with me because I'm not that knowledgeable yet in digital assets. Now, I might know a little bit more than the average person, but we're just, uh, you know, this is, was our first investment in the, in the sector in digital assets. And of course, we spread out a little bit since then. But Brad's been extremely patient with me and, and, uh, and some of my friends were more traditional finance people. And teaching us a bit about digital assets and uh, really holding our hand as we get to know the industry. And now we're in a position to help uh, him because we understand about his business. Uh, he's that, that patience, I hope, is going to pay off with some very, uh, very, um, uh, you know, successful business development opportunities we can work on together. Brett, why don't you tell us about the financial journey of Ecofi, including what it's like to deal with venture capitalists from the very beginning to now? Well, it's been a very pleasant journey for me, which is not always the case, um, because uh, I am a a serial entrepreneur. Equify is uh, my 15th business. So when I um, when I started uh, this project, we already the two co-founders, we seeded the company with the seed capital that was needed. That's a lot of the times really key for any entrepreneur, if you are at a stage where you can provide your own seed funding, it allows you to work with um, the right people from the get-go and also be a little picky. I'm not recommending anyone is too picky about uh, capital, where it comes from, especially this year, uh, given the market uh, conditions. But it gives you that opportunity to pick and choose, okay, this is a good person to come in at stage, uh, this stage, seed stage, whatever it is, or maybe that VC is a much better suited conversation for a series A or B. So we had that luxury. We seeded it uh, with our own funds, internal funds, built the product, then did a token raise, which is, again, a new way of raising capital. So instead of using equity, 
uh, we, uh, we sold our, our tokens that have utility on the platform. And that was phenomenal. The timing of that was uh, very, very uh, well-timed because uh, we raised about 10 and a half million uh, in, in a span of days. It wasn't even a week before we were oversubscribed. And we had so much interest that we uh, started cutting allocations to, to people, unfortunately. But that was a very positive experience. Now, fast forward to this year where we're doing a growth round and it's an equity round because uh, of the state of crypto markets. It's the complete opposite. All the conversations are taking very long. Everyone is very cautious um, and, and, and asking a lot of questions, which I welcome. I, I always say, please do your homework before you buy anything, not even a big investment, but simple things, because a lot of the times the impulse buying um, doesn't yield the best results. So uh, we, we had our share of both. We had an incredible sold out raise last year. This year, it's, uh, it's going a lot slower, but we secured the lead investor. And, um, you know, the majority of the round is, uh, is uh, papered up and spoken for. And, and it's, it, to me, it taught me a lesson about timing and the market conditions, because it's the same project. The project that uh, was off the shelves list the last year was actually a much earlier iteration of uh, where we are this year, where we have a platform, we have 30,000 users, we're growing. But the reaction from the VCs is 180 degrees different just because of the market conditions. So if one thing lesson learned is... Um, if you can time time your raises uh, based on market conditions. Now, Kim, you deal with a lot of entrepreneurs. Generally speaking, how how would you describe their ability to raise capital? Well, it it really varies, um, uh, Keith. I mean, uh, sometimes we're uh, working with entrepreneurs who are um, like Brad uh, have a track record, and so for example. Um, when Brad raised his his token uh, his token issue, we were pers- participating in that round, but really it was him and his network that uh, raised uh, almost all that capital, and we were just participants. Uh, sometimes we're working with intro- entrepreneurs who don't have it, as, and so we had a track record and a network of investors who prepared to back him based on his track record um, and uh, made money with him before. And so some entrepreneurs who are on their second or third or fourth companies, and they've had some wins. Uh, we're, we're supplementing their, uh, their abilities. There's other entrepreneurs, it could be their first company or their second company, or they've always been a private company uh, with that bootstrap themselves. Sometimes they have um, a bit more struggle about how to raise capital. And, that, and, you know, and, and, and we have a bigger role to play in that case. And so we might end up being 90% of the raise in that case um, you know, with, with some founders. So I have to, I'd have to say, Keith, it really varies. And, and really it's, it's about track records. Um, and sometimes, you know, it may be someone's first company, but it doesn't mean that they're not going to be successful. I mean, we, we all have some examples of, uh, I think Mark Zuckerberg, his first company worked out pretty good. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, luckily, unfortunately, we didn't know him. And, and if had we, uh, and hopefully we would have been smart enough to back him. I just use that as, a, as an example. But, but most of the people we work with, um, they, they range between that, between guys like, uh, like Brad, who've had uh, a track record and, and others who are, on their maybe their first company where they need a lot of help um, and we're prepared to step up in both cases if we believe in the people and and the opportunity. Kim, what advice would you give to entrepreneurs for their quest for capital? Um, well, I think uh, I think uh, that Brad had some had some good advice uh, earlier. I mean, one of the things is that um, you know it's important to find uh, it, sometimes you just want to get capital because and it's a really tough market and you just have to take what you can get. Um, but if you have an opportunity to be picky, you know, it's really it is uh, really good to do some research on who your investors are and their track record of backing companies. And so can you invest? Can you get investors who've got a track record of sticking with companies for two, three, four five or even 10 years and who do follow on investments and it can add some value? If you have the luxury of choosing, you know, it's always better to go that way rather than, uh, you know, take the hot money uh, uh, that that. Uh, that may be uh, out as soon as as soon as you know uh, that may not be supporting you for the longer term. Brett, what advice would you like to share on growing a company from the ground up? 
you said you had 15 of them, correct? I'm on my 15th. That is correct. So what, what would be some advice that you would like to share? You know, a lot, sometimes people come into a situation later on. What, what would you re recommend or advice would you give when you're building a company from the ground up? Well, I mean, I think I can share a couple of um, experiences and, and uh, lessons learned uh, from my journey. Um, number one is um, your partners are very important. Um, being in a partnership with one, two, three, four other people at the beginning may seem like fun and you get along, but if all your skills are overlapping or if you have personality mismatches, in the long run, it becomes very difficult to sustain those relationships. And then when the relationship goes, it affects the business a lot. So pick your uh, business partners wisely. Don't, don't just go into business with friends or family just because they're around and available. Um, second is don't go at it alone. I mean, I know there are a lot of uh, solo entrepreneurs that have seen incredible success. But it's starting a new business is very, very difficult. And it's a lot of hard work. Um, when we see the success stories in the news, everyone thinks, oh, that's great. That person made it. They don't really realize how much sacrifice uh, went into it. So it's, it's very important to understand that uh, building a business is, is a team effort. And stronger your team, easier your life is going to be and better results. And finally, you have to have persistence and resilience, uh, just playing back into how difficult it is to be a founder, to be an entrepreneur, to raise capital, and then to deploy that capital in a sensible way to get the results you're looking for. You are going to have moments where um, you're just going to feel like you made a mistake or, or that this is not for you. And if you can't survive those moments, you're not going to be a successful entrepreneur. If you can survive those moments and push forward, then eventually your luck is going to turn. It's all about perseverance. If you can keep going at the thing you believe in and that's providing value to uh, the outside world, you are going to be successful as an entrepreneur. So, Kim, can you tell us how Grand Rock is is working with Brad to support him and his vision. I know that you've mentioned that you were investors in the parent company, but are there some specific examples of ways that you work together? Maybe, you know, I don't know how often you speak weekly, you know, daily, whatever. Can you give us some examples of how you've, you've helped, you know, help him with his vision and, and his role as a CEO? Well, uh, absolutely. We're, we're, uh, we started by just being a, uh, supporting his token round. As I said, he raised, you know, the capital, but we participated and we're lucky enough to get a, a, a position in, in the tokens after investing in the parent company. Um, and so we supplied a little bit of capital. Uh, what we're doing now is uh, we have uh, colleagues that are in the uh, same sector as Brad. So we're making introductions to them. We're also very interested in use cases for the, e the EQX token. And so, for example, we have investments in a company which is in the uh, uh, consumer loyalty and data business. And our, our CEO and, and the team is very interested in developing a loyalty token that would be used to reward consumers. And uh, consideration is maybe using EQ, EQ, EQX token for that purpose. And the same thing goes for some of our, our uh, people that have hard assets. They're uh, looking at maybe tokenizing some of those hard assets. And can Eki uh, Fi and Eki Bank, can they help them with that process? Um, and then thirdly is that we have a, a, a large pool of investors who are starting to, uh, uh, they're more traditional asset investors, who are starting to dip their toes into the um, uh, digital asset world. And Eki Fi offers an entry into that for them uh, uh, through, through, their, through the products Eki Fi offers. And so uh, it's really, of course, we want to provide more capital. Uh, both our own and some of our partners, but we also want to help them uh, with the business side too, uh, because also our investee companies, uh, some of the companies, other companies we're invested in uh, could benefit from the relationship. And that's part of the value add is bringing some of our portfolio companies together to work together. Yeah, it sounds like a great synergistic, uh, you know, way to help him and to help the other companies at the same time. It's a, it's a great strategy. So Brad, uh, you had mentioned that you're currently raising capital. Now, 
uh, I guess you didn't raise it in a, in a day <laughs> um, this time, but certainly you, you've you've made progress. Why don't you Why don't you tell us where you are at this point um, uh, with your capital raise? Sure thing, Keith. Um, it's for me. It's always one extreme or the other. It either goes. The race opens. There's so much demand that people are disappointed and upset at me afterwards, and it's done. Or it goes for months and months and months, and it's uh, it's a true grind. And I'm uh, you know happy to do both. It's uh, it's a very different experience both ways. But um, yeah, we uh, started a growth round at the end of March this year. Timing couldn't have been worse, uh, of course, because the crypto markets uh, went down and, and then uh, traditional tech markets also followed suit. So it's been a, it's been a very interesting journey for us. Um, towards the end of uh, uh, May, we found a lead investor who was interested and in, uh, uncorrelated from those um, markets that got hammered in Q2. And so they um, they started talking to us in the due diligence process. At the end of June, we um, we got our documents signed, so uh, subscription agreement and term sheet. And since then, we've been just going through the rest of the DD and uh, waiting for the wire to hit. But um, that is about three fourths of our round. So they committed fifteen million dollars out of the twenty. Um, we wanted to raise $20 million for our growth round just because in bear markets, the, the strong, really valuable uh, businesses are, are well positioned to uh, take, take as much market share as, as, um, as they can. And that was the strategy. I, I looked at the markets last year and in October, we started fair feeling the bear sentiment take over so i was like if we can raise some money in the next six six months we can really take market share and and if not we'll survive this winter and the bear markets and um, start growing when things turn around but uh, it, uh if we have an opportunity to get a capital injection then i know we can um we can do much uh things much quicker so that's where we're at. We're doing a priced equity round um, for 20 million. 15 is uh, papered up, and now uh, we're looking to fill the last five so we can close the round and uh, continue building. Kim, what would you say to other potential investors you know, that have money that are making to look investments if they were interested in joining the two of you in your journey? Well, I would uh, certainly uh, welcome to join us. I think that uh, Eki Bank and Eki Fi, the combination of a licensed bank and a decentralized platform, I think this is the only opportunity out there where you have a fully licensed bank. Uh, that, that's the infrastructure for a decentralized finance platform. And I think that that uh, getting involved in uh, with us uh, helps you get exposure to that, to that area if you're a new investor in the sector. And if you're an existing investor in the sector, um, there's a lot of services the bank can also, and Eki Fi can provide to an existing investor. So, there's a, a, a number of our friends that are in the sector that need banking services, need, need a platform, uh, a decentralized platform. And, uh, and that's where Equify and Equi Bank can combine to help you be a value, where you can be a value add investor, but also get an investment in a company that can help other companies in your portfolio. Brad, this is, uh, you know, obviously you've dealt with a lot of people over the years. What would you say is uh, that you learned through your relationship with uh, Grand Rock? What, what valuable uh, piece of, of information could you share that you've learned through your relationship? Well, I, um, I learned that um, patience pays and uh, always, uh, you know, as an entrepreneur, if you are working in a field that's innovative, uh, and, and may not be as well known or recognized as the investment community. You need to do a lot of uh, educating. I mean, that's, that's basically uh, most my time is explaining, educating people and, and making sure that they understand first the industry. That's where it starts. I mean, why does decentralized finance 
uh, a good, why is it a good opportunity and why does it exist? How, how come we have something like decentralized finance when financial industry is one of the oldest in, in, in our history? Uh, and then go into the blockchain, the decentralization aspects. But I think if, if you do your job as an entrepreneur, educating people on your uh, vision and, and the technology, um, the investment conversation comes naturally. So obviously with Kim, we had an existing relationship to my business partner and um, it wasn't a, 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 a brand new a start of a conversation and relationship, which was great. But I had instances um, aside from Grand Rock where I was talking to a first time investor, potential investor in the space. And because I took my time to explain and educate them, um, I, I think we got much uh, better results and much more interest than if I had just said, oh, this guy doesn't know what I'm doing, so I'm just going to pass and move. And in some instances, that may be the right thing to do, just to move on to the next investor, especially if uh, you know the clock is ticking and you're trying to get in front of as many people as possible. But when you have the luxury of time and you can educate people, uh, the results show uh, the difference. And, and how about you, Kim? What, what have you learned by working with Brad Nekafi? Well, um, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're, I'm, I'm like in school. I'm in like digital asset <laughs> school with Brad. So um, I, I'm still learning. But, uh, but yeah, we've got a, we've um, really, uh, I mean, that's what I have to thank Brad for is he's really given me a, uh, you know, I, I hope I'm getting out of elementary school now, but uh, when I first started talking, I felt like I was in, I was in crypto kindergarten. And so I think he's got me through elementary school now and I'm hoping to graduate into uh, high school soon. And, um, and so uh, he's been, he's been very patient with me and, and educated me a lot on how the, how the system works. And uh, I know he surrounded himself with some great people both uh, the existing partners that we've uh, that we knew because we were investors in the company um, and then also some some uh, new partners he's brought on board which are pretty exciting for us so um, I, I've I would have to say that uh, my education in, in digital assets has been coming from uh, from Brad so I thank him a lot for that <laughs> thank Ter you. Thank you. terrific so so Brad how may future investors strategic partners or potential customers reach you if they're interested in working with Ecofi? Well, um, obviously, uh, warm introductions are the best way. Uh, so if they know you, they know Kim and ask for an introduction, that's, um, that's probably going to be the best. But I can also be reached at brad at ecofi.com. That's B-R-A-D at eqifi.com and our website has all our socials and things like that if they have any questions if they want to check out the product the platform eqifi.com is uh, where all our information is and um, you know i answer all emails so and how about you kim how can people contact you well i guess they could contact me through email if they have they want to ask a question or or uh, have an investment opportunity we're, we're always open to looking at new projects. And the uh, uh, best way to reach me is at Koishi, K-O-I-S-H-I, at grandrockcapital.com. Uh, and we, uh, we also try to answer all of our emails in a timely way. Uh, we, we're, we, we invest in a small number of companies um, and try to be very value-add. Um, so we, we don't, we're not a portfolio manager that has 40 or 50 investments. We tend to keep it a smaller pool of, of companies and try to really um, help the companies that we're invested in. Fantastic. Well, thank you both for sharing your story and experiences with us today. Our audience will appreciate it, and we wish you the best in your endeavors. Before we head off, is there anything else that you'd like to share? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Keith. I appreciate it. Sure. Well, that wraps up another interview on funding and disrupting. And if you'd like to share your story, please visit us at fundingdisrupting.com and complete the interview application. 
thank you for joining us on this episode of Funding and Disrupting. Don't forget to visit our sponsor, AuraCo.com, to learn more about working directly with Aura Collective's exclusive technology PR team. They'll help you craft your message, get noticed in the press, and help you get your venture to the funding finish line. Again, you can visit them at www.auraco.com. Keep funding and keep disrupting.